Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a chat app and not just the front end in Flutter, but everything. Front end, back end, third party applications, connectivity, everything you need to make a chat in your mobile app happen. Now, why is that important? In the last years, we've seen more and more applications become a chat app because for many use cases, chat is over time added on top of whatever your application does. You've seen like Tinder or something like that become a chat app, not just WhatsApp. You've seen, let's say an, an app where you buy your insurance online, uh, needs a chat function to talk to the, um, to, to the agent or a shopping app uh, needs a way to, to ask questions to the vendor or support or, or anything like that. So a chat function is added to more and more applications. So I guess everyone should know how that works, what it takes to build that. So let's have a look at all the functional components you need to build to make chat happen. Now let me start with a couple of containers for now. So we have the mobile app on the left. I have here two containers because in many cases you are texting with someone else on a different mobile app. So or it can be many, one-to-one uh, -one or one-to-many, a group chat. Uh, so that's why I brought in two containers here. And we have a backend that is like the, the switcher, the, the router and a lot of central functions to connect all that. Now let's go through a couple of building blocks for the functionality. It's so much more than just having a couple of text bubbles on the left and a couple on the right for your, yourself or for other people. It's about connectivity. It's about authenticating who's talking. It's about notifying the, the other side. So let's go through them one by one. Starting here with a login and a sign up. Uh, to some extent, you're, in most cases, you need to talk to someone by authorizing, by knowing who that is. So you need an account and you need to log in. Sign up, log in, these two stand for the whole complex of access management, identity management. And in most cases these days, some social login, can be Google, can be Facebook, uh, is, a, is a very convenient, very common way to log into an app. Then when you think of something like WhatsApp or similar, you will have a list of open chats and you can add a new one or you can delete one, kick one out. Uh, in some cases, if your chat application allows uh, group chats, you can add one, uh, add participants to your group chat or remove them depending on your access rights for that chat. So that would be the next uh, part here. And of course, the core function is to send messages and then of course, receive them as well. So send, receive messages, I put that in here twice. So the counterparty needs to get that too. And receiving messages actually is a, is a big thing because you need to be notified, right? The sender will be in that app, will have it in the foreground, will be active on that the receiver might not be. So you need to notify him and that can be a variety of channels. He might be on the app active right now in that moment looking at that chat. He might be looking at a different chat. He might not have the, the app online and needs to get a notification on an urgent message. And maybe he's not accessible via notifications. Maybe he's not reacting for a couple of days. So if you can't reach him with a notification, then you might want to add an email to follow up and try to get the user to access his, email, his app. Now let's look at the backend. Here, of course, this is where the user management authentication happens. You need some authentication uh, system. I made a video on how to implement that using Cognito from AWS. And you can also include Google or Facebook or others as a social login to make it more convenient. The interfaces for that are standardized, so it's fairly easy to integrate additional um, identity management systems for social login. 
Then we need, of course, a building block to manage chat channels, create a chat channel, delete one, modify the participants, all that. And we need a user repository and discovery, right? So let's say, for example, WhatsApp. If you try to reach someone, you will use his phone number and the backend of WhatsApp will know whether that uh, phone number is associated with an active WhatsApp account. If yes, you can send it to that number. If not, you cannot. So this is a, a repository function you need to implement on your backend and also to some degree on the client side where you need to access the device contacts contacts to use the mobile numbers that the user has in his contacts and basically bring these two components together the contacts on the device with the user repository of the platform itself now of course to send and receive messages you need the function to store and to relay messages store them for new users logging in and when you get a message, you need to pass it on as quickly as possible to the users who need to receive it. And this relaying, this sending can be done on multiple uh, levels of communication. So there can be, for example, WebSockets, the, the most, the fastest way, really. Uh, you can also implement it with, with REST API, but not really that, that well. If the user is not online, uh, then notification would be the, the method of choice to try to get him online. And of course, you can also use email for users who are not online and maybe not accessible at all. So notifying users is an important uh, function. And in order to notify users with push notifications, you also need to manage the devices that users use. I also would like to mention a couple of optional functions that some chat systems offer, others not, uh, but they're becoming more and more common. So you might want to consider them as well. That can be um, content beyond just texting. So sending pictures or even an audio or video chat uh, live or sending an audio message or a brief video message or, or whatever. Um, or sharing your current location. You can do that in, in some applications. So the more uh, content types you can offer, the better, I guess. Uh, and of course, the whole live chat function, meaning like using it like a telephone or video conference um, is another functional block, optional, but appreciated. Uh, deleting sent messages is, is a feature that is on top and of course getting notifications on delivery and on reading from the other side. So these are some optional functions you can add later or decide against it altogether. Now let me walk through these components one by one again and highlight a couple of uh, other videos I made to go into all the detail you need to actually implement that. So for the whole login and sign up and user management authentication, I made a video uh, how to implement that with Cognito that spans Flutter on the front end side to send the, the username password to Cognito, get a token, uh, sign up, all that and also on the back end to verify that the token is, is correct. So that really um, involves an identity and access management system like Cognito as a third party. Made a video on that. Have a look if you're implementing that one. Listing chats. So in order to make that happen, uh, back end and front end side, that's really based on Lambda functions, API gateway, using a WebSocket connection most likely. Uh, DynamoDB in the background. So I made videos on all these functions, uh, having a couple of widgets to, to list the uh, chat entries and to build the front end for all that. Same for add, remove contacts. So this is really the, the combination of some front end widgets in Flutter, 
WebSocket connection and accessing a couple of Lambda functions in the background, which uh, then accesses the database to NumberDB and in some cases can also use SNS to send notifications to a counterpart where required. A user repository discovery, same thing, right? You need to build that for your own app. If you need to uh, discover other users of that app, like in WhatsApp, if you're just talking to a chat agent from your service, then of course you don't need that. And sending receiving messages, same thing. That's just a screen components, transferring data on the WebSocket. So that's fairly easy. Now, notifying users, manage devices, that's the whole SNS topic, getting the device token, registering that as an endpoint in SNS, sending notifications. I made a video on, on that one, how that works and batches, notifications, managing all the pending items, pending uh, unread messages on the system, on the client side. For that, I also made a video very recently. So basically all the components I uh, described how to implement them in, in previous videos already. So here I just give a complete overview of what are the components you need to put together to make chat happen. Now with all that in mind, uh, maybe next time you use a chat app and, and chat with some of your friends, you look at that chat app and think about what is happening inside in the background. How is it transferring data to the backend? How does it get to the counterparty? What little details are happening there? Uh, you can judge by the, the latency and by the details on what's happening, how that works internally. And you can also see how different chat apps are different in tiny details. So I noticed on some, when I have the, the chat open and I'm chatting with a friend and I'm really one second after the other writing a, a message, I get a notification on a different device as well while on others I do not, right? It's not necessary. If the system knows I'm already looking at the, that screen and getting all these messages, reading them right now, I don't need to send that notification to a different device. Others always broadcast these notifications. So these are little things you really can look out for and see the differences. Then of course, sometimes you see these little dots when the other side is typing and you you sometimes wonder what is he typing so long right no who knows what's happening on inside the system but there's a lot more happening than just taking a message and passing it on so it it shows he's typing something and then also the the send uh, uh, notification the acceptance on the server side is displayed the relay to the client side, to the other counterparty is shown and the read notification, so the, the blue ticking, right? All these are tiny details you can notice when you see different chat apps. And looking at all these um, functional components we just looked at, you can really understand how the details of that specific chat app are working and you see how different chats are implemented differently. You can also see when you open the app up, uh, is a chat history stored on the device? Is it loaded from the server? Which parts are loaded from the server? What updates are done? Uh, often the, the, uh, the other person has like a profile picture uh, on the chat. Is it loaded? In that moment, you can see sometimes it takes two seconds or so. So that basically implies it's building up a WebSocket connection. And once that is done, so that takes sometimes around two seconds. Once that is established, then it pulls that picture and it refreshes that. So you can really judge all these little details. Use a couple of different chat apps, see how they're differently implemented 
and based on that uh, design the architecture of your chat app as you want it um, as it is convenient and fits for your need so i hope that helps you to really get a better understanding of the whole functional components for a chat app and if you need more details on how to implement certain aspects of these functional blocks let me know in the comments below and i will add another video later uh, if you like this video if it helps you to get your chat app under control please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this one